Hey guys, we are back with some more Edmonton Oilers franchise mode, and in this one we have the playoffs versus the Vancouver Canucks, so we're going to check out their lines, and they obviously had Elias Pettersson, and they also have Brock Basser, Craig Carter, that first line's pretty good, but their depth isn't as impressive, they have Berchi, Blay, and Goldobin on the second line, and then Raddy... Horvat and Vertanen on the third, and Pearson, Gaudet, and Lind on the fourth. Defensively, Quinn Hughes, Ole Ulevi, Urho Vakaninen with Jet Wu, and Libor Sulak with Mark Edward Vlasic, and in goal you have Demko Markstrom, so good goaltender no matter what. Tanev's injured, Cousins is also scratched. So as we get into the series, we'll see what this series holds for us. Obviously, the I think the key thing here is going to be star scoring because of obviously Elias Pettersson and Brock Besser and obviously a couple of good goaltenders on both sides. So it should be a good one. First period, that'll be a one nothing lead for Vancouver. Goal by Bo Horvat on Subban. Second period, nothing doing. All right, so so far looking like more of a defensive series. Which I guess that could be a good thing because that means the goaltenders, they're playing pretty well right now. 29, 21 shots to 19 in favor of your Oilers, but the Canucks up one nothing. So let's see what happens here in the third. And let's get some more shots on that. Power play for the Edmonton Oilers, nothing doing. And a power play for the Vancouver Canucks, nothing doing for them as well. And there is a goal for Elias Pettersson on Subban. And then Blay on Subban. 3 nothing. So it was pretty defensive up until that goal by Pettersson. Who opened it up for Vancouver. And then Blay. And the, the game was pretty much theirs from right there. Blay, Horvat, and Demko with the three stars of the game. I would imagine Demko. Yeah, with the shutout. 30 saves for him as well. So going into game number two now. Tim Fleischer back for Bakersfield. We'll just do best lines for them. And let's hope we can win this one because it wouldn't be, obviously won't be good to go down 2-0. Uh, especially against Thatcher Demko as we know what he's capable of from the Wallsburg GM mode. So first period and that'll be a goal for Mitch Marner on Thatcher Demko. There you go. First goal of the series. Second period. There you go. All right. Dry side with two goals and then another goal from Marner. Uh, both guys with a two-goal night. And we should be good from here as long as we don't collapse. Let's just focus on finishing the game. 32 shots to 12. My goodness. We, we have been pretty much in their zone for the entire game so far. But now they're starting to get some, some shots on net. Power play for Edmonton goes nowhere. Five minutes remaining in the third. Everything looks to be all wrapped up from here. And that will be a shutout for Malcolm Subban. So Demko gets a shutout in game number one. And Subban now has a shutout of his own. Marodi injured with a concussion. Best lines, that's the AHL. So let's see if the trend of shutouts continues here in game number three. More than likely not. I wouldn't imagine three shutouts in a row is too common in a series. But... We'll see what happens. First period, and no shutout. So that'll be a goal for Leah Anderson on Demko, and then Horvat on Subban, but then Captain Clutch McDavid with the goal on Demko. We're up 2-1. Shots are 18-12. to Second period. Nothing doing. I will take it. Shots are 31-22. to If we could get one more goal, I'd, I'll feel pretty good about this, just given the lack of goal scoring whenever... A team is down in this series. So give me one more here, Edmonton. Give me one more. Please just one more. And I think we'll be good to go. <laughs> or is Malcolm Subban going to do the thing? Is he going to do the thing? He does the thing. And Leon Dreisaitl with the empty netter. We win 3-1 in the game. And we go up 2-1 in the series. Poyo Yarvi with three assists. Demko, the second star of the game, I would imagine. And then Subban, the first star of the game. There you go. Going into game number four. And that is the type of game I like to see. Let's hope for more of that. <laughs> really, because that was a pretty 
Good game for your Edmonton Oilers. Let's just have more of the same here. First period. There you go. Jimmy VZ on Demko and then Connor McDavid on Demko. So depth scoring so far coming through. Second period. Okay. Berchi on Subban, but then Nikita Vizhnevsky, the rookie, his first playoff goal on Demko. Going to the third, up 3-1. to one. I'm feeling pretty confident right now. If we could just get one more. Okay, so there's a goal by Besser. And there it is, Yamamoto with the goal on Demko. And we're looking pretty solid here in this series. There you go, Nuge with the goal on Demko. Our depth clearly at this point has beaten out their depth. And we're showing why we have the better depth. And we're we're scoring pretty much at will on them now. I mean, Demko, I'm sure Demko's trying. But then there was a goal by Besser. And then Nuge into the empty net. 6-3, the final score. So that was... The first wide open game for both sides. Jimmy Vesey, the third star of the game. One goal, one assist. Nuge, the second star. And Besser, the first star. Even though the Canucks lost. So we're going into game number five now. And it's it's looking like... I don't want to jinx anything because... We've been up 3-1 several times before and then lost the series. But we have total control of the Vancouver Canucks right now. So I, I don't really have any reason to get worried at the moment. Let's just go through it. First period, and that'll be a goal by Quinn Hughes on Subban. That might be a reason to get worried, but it's only one period. Let's sim the next period before we start worrying. Second period, all right. Maybe now we can start worrying a little bit. <laughs> semi Blade with the goal on Subban from the neutral zone. My goodness, Subban. You're right there, bud. All right. Third period. Come on, Edmonton. <laughs> make up for the make up for that neutral zone goal that Malcolm Subban just let in, and everything should be all good to go. Maybe we go to overtime. I, I think I would I would enjoy that because <laughs> normally I don't like having short videos, and yeah, that is gonna be a two nothing loss. So once again, another shutout in this series for the Vancouver Canucks. Three stars of the game, Goldobin, Demko, and then Subban was actually the first star of the game with 35 saves. So, uh, yeah, obviously, the depth scoring is being a little bit inconsistent right now. We had a 3-0 loss there, no scoring. 4-0 win, some depth scoring in there. 3-1 win, and then a 6-3 win, and then a 2-0 loss. So this series is kind of all over the place right now. Let's just take care of business here in game number six and get it over with. I don't want any nonsense here, EA. Just please let us get past round number one for the sake of the sanity of Oilers fans. First period, nothing doing. I'll take it. 13 shots to 12. Pretty even. Second period, and that'll be two goals for the Edmonton Oilers. Leah Sanderson and Connor McDavid. There you go. Up 2 nothing. 22 shots to 20. Relatively even there, but we're up by two going into the third. If we could get one more, I think things are looking pretty good for a series victory. And power play that goes nowhere, that's fine. Uh, but then Bo Horvat on Subban. Okay. Hopefully no more than that. <laughs> Please, Edmonton. Edmonton, shut it down, shut it down. Thank you. No. Yeah, okay. Good. Gustav Nyquist. I thought that was going to be a goal for Vancouver there for a second, but Nyquist with the empty netter with 57 seconds remaining wins us the series, wins us the game, and we're off to round number two. McDavid, the third star of the game, Subban, the second star, and Demko, the first star. Yeah, the goaltenders really shined in this series, and Demko put up quite the fight, but he wasn't quite good enough. For our core forwards and, and offensive weapons. Playoff stats. Dreisaitl with 6 points. Barry, Puyu Yarvi with 5 points. McDavid and Nuge with 4. Marner, VZ and Gino with 3. 2 for Anderson, Nyquist and Merkley. 1 for Yamamoto, Vizhnevsky, Dezingle, Nurse, Clefbaum. And everybody else with nothing. Faceoffs. McDavid is the only one above a 50. So we didn't actually win too many face-offs in that series. I'm guessing how we won it was we were able to get a lot of takeaways. Because Anderson was the second best face-off guy after McDavid with a 48.2. And then 
Gino with a 42.9, and then Nuge with a 42.7. So whenever the fourth and second line were out there, we, we weren't having too much possession. So I guess it's it's a good thing. It's a real good thing that McDavid and Pugliarvi are good with the takeaways because otherwise I'm not sure how that series would have gone. Hits-wise, Larson, Clefbaum, Dreisaitl, Byram all in the double digits. And Dezingle, Nurse, McDavid, Puyo, Yarby, VZ, all above a hit per game. Now, let's see the takeaways to giveaways. This will be interesting. Marner, much better takeaway to giveaway ratio here in the playoffs so far than in the regular season. Puyo, Yarby, yeah, I would imagine 7-2. to Now, where's McDavid? 4-3. to three. All right, So, it was mainly Puyo, Yarby doing the defensive work on that first line. What about Dreisaitl? Dreisaitl had 1-3. to three. Okay, so very unusual numbers for many of these guys, other than Paul Yarvi, who is just Mr. Consistency when it comes to defense. And in terms of goaltenders, you have Malcolm Subban with the 943. So I can't really say I'm surprised, because so far, while he's been in Edmonton, and whenever we're in the playoffs, he's kind of been a stud. <laughs> A 9.38 last year in 11 games, and so far this year in 6 games, a 9.43. He's been kind of incredible. And checking the team stats, just to see where we're struggling. And we're currently at a 2.67 goals for per game. Goals against per game, we are at a 1.67. Thank you, Malcolm Subban. The power play, of course, is pretty weak. It is down there at an 11.1. Only 2 power play goals. On 18 opportunities in 6 games. That's a little brutal. Penalty kill. We were at an 88%. 25 opportunities. Only 3 power play goals against. Not too bad. Uh, given the amount of penalties we took. It definitely could have been worse. Yeah, it looks like we're not the most disciplined team in the world. As a matter of fact. We were the least disciplined team in the entire playoffs. We took the most penalties in that first round with 25 in just 6 games. So, gotta stay out of the box there. So now with round number 1 being all said and done, it's time to see who we have in the second round. And it looks like it will be the LA Kings who beat the Anaheim Ducks in 5 games. But we'll wait for confirmation here, but it should logically be the Kings. And yes indeed, there it is. So we'll check out the lines of the LA Kings and see what they're all about. So the first line... Adrian Kempe, Anze Kopitar, the 82 overall Kopitar, and 84 Tyler Toffoli. So not the greatest first line you've ever seen. Second line, Sasha Machula, 81, Gabriel Velarde, 83, and Akita Sherbach, 85. Third line, Sheldon Rampal, 81 overall, Jarrett Anderson Dolan, 83 overall, and Craig Smith, 82 overall. Fourth line, Carl Grundstrom, Rasmus Kupari, and Brock McGinn. So no studs whatsoever, I would say, on this offensive group. The highest overall is the 85 Nikita Sherbach. Yeah, that's... Okay, this will be interesting. So maybe... I would imagine that since they're in the second round, I'm going to say these guys are good defensively. I mean, you, you got Kempe with five points. Kopitar with 5 points, Toffoli with 5, and then Matula with 3, Velarde with 3, Sherbach with 4, Rempal with 2, Dolan, Anderson Dolan with 2, Smith with 3, Grunstrom with 3, Kupari with 4, so, okay, maybe it's, maybe it's depth scoring that's getting them by, and then McGinn with 1 goal. I would have to imagine it's a combination of their defense and, and their depth scoring. Defensively, Sean Dirtsey and Drew Doughty. Are a pair, and Lawrence Pilot with Victor Soderstrom, and then Timofei Nabokov with Kel Clegg. So not exactly the strongest defensive core either, other than Doughty. So Doughty's definitely their star. What about goaltenders? So, wow, Steve Mason 79, and then Jonathan Quick also a 79. Okay, so who's uh, who's playing here? I would imagine that'd be Quick. Yeah, nine. Pff. 942 save percentage. So even though he's got that 79 overall, he has shown that he's clearly still capable 
of putting up fantastic numbers in the playoffs. So we shouldn't <laughs> uh, write off that 79 overall. Scratched are Ville Meskinen, Michael Isamont, and Albin Gru. So there you go. There are the LA Kings. This should be a pretty interesting second round matchup because, as we saw, their only real stud is Drew Doughty. There's nothing that really scares me about that four core. But maybe what will scare me <laughs> is if their depth scoring is really good in this series. And the rest of the playoff matchups, the Carolina Hurricanes versus the Washington Capitals, the Buffalo Sabres versus the Tampa Bay Lightning, the St. Louis Blues versus the Nashville Predators, and your Edmonton Oilers, of course, versus the LA Kings. So I'll see you guys in the next one when we face the LA Kings in round two of the year five playoffs.